Hi, and welcome to the sixth section of this course. Here, we're going to improve our application with asynchronous calls. We will apply this technique in various parts of our social photo website, from the comment and like features to uploading beautiful photos. An asynchronous call is used to perform actions without redirecting or refreshing the page. Ajax, short for Asynchronous JavaScript, and XML is used widely for that. We can use an example to explain the difference between synchronous and asynchronous process. Imagine you are watching your favorite movie and you'd like to eat a pizza. A synchronous process forces you to pause the movie, go to the kitchen, prepare the pizza, bake it, and when ready, continue with the movie. The asynchronous way is to order a pizza so someone else will bake it for you and it won't interrupt your movie. So, what's the next step? Eating a pizza? Maybe later. But now, we can update the Publish a Post feature, implementing an Ajax call. In this video, we will go through some theory about client-server communication and why it is so cool to work with this technology. The idea is to publish a post directly from the home page or dashboard. The workflow can be described with this mock-up. When the user clicks on the Publish link, a model window appears with the post form. The user fills and submits the form. The modal disappears and a post is created on the page. To make it work, we build a REST API. REST stands for Representational State Transfer, and it's an architecture style to represent client-server communication. In this schema, you can see a summary of the most used methods and HTTP status codes for CRUD operations. Before going further, I suggest downloading the code related to this video. To enable the modal, we must install the bootstrap.js file present in the bootstrap bundle in our JS folder. The bootstrap file was downloaded before. Then we can use a simple HTML modal window like this one. You can notice that the modal contains the form post code inside. We are always using the CSRF token, but in a different way. Because the modal can be used in many pages, it's better to create a CSRF token inside the view instead of passing it through the controller. How do we do that? Opening the app.php file, we can simply inject a global variable for our CSRF manager class into the Twig template engine. Before continuing with the modal, let's inspect the home page controller. As you can see, the page will fetch every post present in the database. Let's open our dashboard. We notice that it is quite similar as before, but it will fetch the posts ordered with the newest first. This line defines the order in the select statement. Another file that has been changed is the base template. In these lines, we put some links behind the firewall, and here, there is the HTML code to open the modal window. On the top of the file, you can notice the bootstrap.js file inclusion and a new JS file. This new file is called script.js, and will contain all the JavaScript code to perform Ajax calls. The user post controller has been refactored as well. Mainly, it has removed unused code like the flash message handling. The post method now returns a rendered HTML code of the latest inserted element or an error message with an appropriate status code. Finally, we arrived to JavaScript. The script.js contains our custom code with the help of jQuery. I'm going to open both the script and the modal template in split view to understand the workflow better. The first line, document ready function, will prevent document manipulation before the page is not fully loaded. The second line will trigger some actions when the form is submitted. 
you can see a reference to the form ID. In the third line, we will get the form data and convert it to a URL encoded notation. The following lines are for the AJAX request. We can set up some parameters like the type of method, in our case, a post, and the URL to call. We are using the same URL as the form. Finally, we are defining the data to send. In case of a success, the done method will be triggered. The method will dynamically insert the new post, coming from the post response as the first element in the page, and then will close the modal window. The error method will show an alert window with an error message in case of failures. The last lines are useful to clear the modal form values when the modal window will be open. It is natural to be overwhelmed with all the information at once. Don't worry, the jQuery website can provide you with information on AJAX functions. Now it's time to test our code. I'm going to open the browser with the Web Developer toolbar open. You should find a similar toolbar in other browsers too. Opening the Network tab, we can inspect all the calls the page performs. Let's try to create a new post. I'm going to click on Publish a Post. The modal appears, and I'm filling the form with some data. Now, I'm going to press the Publish button, and we should see a post request in the Network tab. Here we go. The post request returned status 201 and the HTML, which is perfectly inserted on top of the page. Let's try that again without filling in the title. As you can see, the response is 400 bad request, as the request is malformed. In this video, we saw how to perform an AJAX call.